Thank you, Gohans. <laughs> the, bec because uh, we didn't we didn't see prob maybe ten months, so m she forgot my <laughs> my place. So the my talk about uh, interventional field, but uh, imaging is uh, transesophageal imaging. So the now the imaging is modality is very important for the especially for the congenital structural field and uh, MRI, CT, including transesophageal echo, the 3D information is very important for the accurate uh, morphology or the also the imaging about the operators. So first I'd like to briefly summarize about uh, what is the uh, trans catheter AST closure. Some of the uh, new doctors is here. So the, this is, the, I put, the, I select for the adult patients because uh, some of the adult cardiologists is there here. So the, this is a 63 years old male, uh, the ASD patient, relatively enlarged heart and pulmonary uh, blood flow significantly increased. So this is a transesophageal echocardiography, relatively small uh, aortic uh, limb, and uh, you can see that good enough for the posterior limb. And this is a uh, relatively floppy of the inferior posterior limb, but uh, usually this is good enough for the device closure. So the usually we do the balloon sizing, but not always. This is the, the X-ray film, uh, radiographic picture of the device as is approaching to the left side. This is a special catheter for the so-called uh, Hausdorff sheath. And echo shows, we can see the echo device is approaching to the left side. Then, device was deployed from the left atrium. It looks like a light side, but uh, once you see the echo, device was opened inside the left atrium. So the many of the doctors approaching for the from the light uh, upper pulmonary vein, close to the light upper pulmonary vein, this is uh, one of the uh, tip of the uh, procedure success, especially for the aortic limb deficiency. Then, uh, light atrial side is open and echo confirming about the uh, site of the, where do we open the device? Because the uh, only <coughs> operator looking of the uh, fluoroscopic view no operator can see that where is the atrial septum. So the m operator watching of the where we now by the transesophageal imaging. So the echo imaging very important in the cath lab now. So this is a, uh, releasing the device. So the procedure was completed. So this is a final view. The good thing is uh, the compared to the surgery, uh, the transcatheter procedure was uh, hemodynamically, hemodynamically improvement quite rapidly happened. So just only 24 after the procedures, chest X-ray shows a con totally different, uh, th but the same patient, the totally different for the uh, cardio. Uh, cardiac me cardiomegaly was resolved completely. So in the originally uh, pediatric cardiologist or cardiologist uh, for the ASD closure, we only measure of the ATL ASD size and measuring about a QPQS and the cath lab. But now we have to require more accurate ASD anatomy. 
So once we're looking for the ASD by the transesophageal echocardiography, ASD have many kind of the shape, many kind of the anatomies. So this is the a a septal defect was opened middle of the center of the atrial septum. This is a very good candidate for the ASD closure. However, this type of the ASD is uh, uh, relatively low, uh, only one-fourth of the uh, ASD patient. Majority of patients have a uh, uh, relatively small aortic rim. Uh, this is a, this, this patient have very limited uh, aortic rim deficiency. Uh, this patient have a relatively large part of the rim was deficient. And this patient have a inferior uh, rim has uh, deficient. And this patient have a two defect. So uh, in the past, we said all of the ACE all of patients with ASD, QPQS, uh, 1.5 or uh, 2.0, something like that. But now these anatomical evaluation is very important for the procedure success of the ASD closure. Uh, the, in our uh, echocardiographic analysis, thus all of the rim patient with have sufficient, that means all of rim was more than five millimeter, is only quarter of the patient. Uh, contrary, nearly 60 to 70 percent have patient have a uh, supero anterior rim, that means aortic rim deficiency less than five millimeter. And another four percent of patient had inferior posterior rim deficiency, and uh, seven percent of patient had uh, multiple, that is uh, anterior plus posterior limb deficiencies. So the most important part of the procedure was good device selection. So that is the maximum diameter of the defect. So this is the patient relatively uh, circular ASD. Maximum diameter of ASD is 16 millimeter. The other side of the 13 millimeter. So once we uh, balloon sizing, balloon sizing diameter was 18 millimeter, and I choose for the 19 millimeter ASD de uh, device. This a patient have a another much more elliptical shape, La but the larger the diameter was 16 millimeter, smaller diameter was nine millimeter, elliptic elliptici is 0 0.56, once we Again, we do balloon sizing of this patient. Sizing was 18 millimeter, and we put on a 19 millimeter device for this patient. So the most important factor for the device selection is the maximum size. Major ASD diameter is essential for the uh, device selections. So, the, so that means that once we can uh, measure correctly about the uh, maximum ASD diameter, that is a very good uh, information for the device selections. If the ASD was become larger, oops, sorry, larger, uh, <coughs> definition of the maximum diameter is become difficult. So this patient have a uh, closely to 30 millimeter diameter However, once we make a three-dimensional uh, echocardiography, which angle have a maximum diameter is visualized very clearly. So maximum diameter is around the 30 degree of that transesophageal echocardiography. So we see that uh, looking back for the TE, 30 degree have 32 millimeter uh, defect, so we choose for that uh, 34 millimeter device for this patient, and actually uh, device deployment is very easy and decision is quite easy. Uh, once we do the balloon sizing for this patient, still the much more uh, difficult uh, decision. Balloon sizing is always, always very difficult in the large size of ASD. Uh, this is skip. So 
the another another factor is uh, this kind of ASD. Some something the septum appeared in the here. Here. So 2D echocardiography is very difficult. What is the uh, ASD anatomy? But we once we have a uh, three dimensional echocardiography, very easy to uh, visualize what is the ASD of, of this patient. So patient have uh, some band of between the two defects uh, and a separating for the defect two part. So that once we take uh, this picture, uh, we decide to close the uh, sheath from the bigger size of the defect and de put in a one device for this patient. So that we put in a relatively large device for the to the large part of the defect and covered for the one device uh, totally. Also, this is the complicated cases, septum aneurysms, and some of the shunt, mm. more than two shunt, can be visualized by the trans transthoracic echocardiography. And also, septum was aneurysmal formation. This kind of the uh, information is available by transthoracic echocardiography. However, anatomy, uh, anatomical uh, evaluation is still very difficult. TE shows that looks two defects, two defects, have two defects, but something like a three defects. Even in the color, two t color Doppler echocardiography, two-dimensional echocardiography, some difficulty for the uh, visualize of the multiple defects. Once make a three-dimensional, this patient have a four defects, one, two, three, four. So what we, when, when we have uh, this kind of the information before the patient go into the cath lab, uh, we discuss about uh, how do we uh, perform for the ASD closure. At this time, we decided to close for the, these three defect, at this uh, defect one, two, four, and probably uh, ASD3 was covered for the between the device uh, ASD2 and 4. So looking back the uh, two-dimensional, this defect was ASD1. This shunt was ASD2. And this is the ASD3. ASD4 is very difficult to visualize. So uh, multiple, to close the multiple D, v, uh, ASD, we do usually do the sizing for the device defect. And at this time, the, we successfully three device implantation at the same time. So this is the final uh, picture, uh, 12, 17 millimeter and 10 millimeter plus nine millimeter device was deployed at once. However, once the, patient, the final uh, TE echocardiography shows that uh, ASD4 is not so small. So, uh, but uh, we think about uh, this defect may close about uh, uh, endothelium. Endothelium will be overlapped about this uh, defect in the future. Uh, this is uh, one year after the procedure, still the shunt was persisted. And patient come to come back to my clinic, and uh, she asked me to close the one more defect because uh, she have no trouble about the previous uh, procedures. So we close of the one more defect uh, one year after the uh, first procedure, and this is a, a still 10 millimeter defect was uh, of visualized, and one more device we put in the one year after the procedures. <laughs> so the very complex case, of course, that we can send this kind of patient for the, to the surgery. Uh, however, 
that even though we have uh, four devices, patient know atrial arrhythmias, and finally, uh, patient have a complete uh, closure of the defect. So, uh, My conclusion is very simple. Advantages of 3D transesophageal imaging, early quick definition of ASD morphology. This is a very important for the operators of the, uh, for the interventional procedures. And accurate detection of the maximum diameter of ASD. This is a very important for the large ASD especially for the patient with the inferior posterior limb deficiency. And I think is accurate diagnosis, especially for the multiple ASDs, uh, is accurate diagnosis very easy and uh, clear if we use for the 3D transesophageal imaging. Thank you very much.